Uh, Shalom, Apostle Tahar coming back at you with this truth, giving all praise to you. How about Shem Yahu Shai, by Shem Raka Kodash. And I'm going to title this video, You Cannot Serve God and Mammon. And the reason why I'm doing this video is based upon uh, something that um, the Apostle Gabar told me that he, that he had saw a video or somebody sent him a video on his on his uh one of his videos put in the comment section dealing with a man by the name of Bezalel if I'm saying his name right I don't have the video video in front of me but um he's supposed to be at that time he was uh part of the IUIC and he was uh he dealt with um doing the uh video openings and uh the professional look to the videos and the artwork and even the the t-shirts he was he dealt with the the artwork on the t-shirts and everything so he had left and he he'd been in in um he'd been a part of the IUIC for a great number of years so he's no spring chicken he's no, he's no guy that just came into this thing 6 months ago or a year or a year and a half, he'd been in this thing for a number of years, and he was, uh, you know, he, he, he was uh, up there in rank, and it was him and some other brothers that uh been in this thing, or the IUIC for a number of years, and then they uh, left uh, the IUIC, and he did a video on it, um, and, you know, I didn't see the, the whole video, I kind of listened to certain things, it parts of the video, and I heard what uh, Gabar, the Apostle Gabar said, because he saw the video, and he actually did a video on this on this subject. And I'm not going to really go into detail because, like details, because I didn't see the whole video and I didn't get all the information, but I got enough. And basically, it comes down to uh, you know money. In, this, in the, the title of the scripture, you cannot serve God and mammon. You know, when you come into this truth, and I always, or most of the time I quote or I bring out the scripture in um, Ezekiel, the third chapter from the first verse, the first couple of verses, it was told unto Ezekiel to eat this roll and go out and teach the children of Israel. And, um, that statement right there, that should be a T-shirt, you know, you know that 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 sh that should be a uh, pretty much an opening to every video that we do, because those few words say a whole lot. It says, "Eat this roll, and go and teach the children of Israel." It didn't say, "Eat this roll and teach the children of Edom." And the other nations and Edomites can make it. Um, you know, all kind of nonsense that these. It didn't say uh, teach that uh, the, the white man is not the Edomites. I mean, there's so many different Israelite groups out there with with their various changes of doctrine. But your focus is supposed to be on these scriptures. You're supposed to learn these scriptures. That's eating the roll, the whole roll, and then going out and teach the children of Israel. That's that's our job to teach the. That's our job. This is not. It's not simple. You don't. I mean, it's simple. It's not hard. You don't have to be a rocket scientist scientist to figure out the scriptures and you know, kind of know what to do. It's very simple. Eat this roll. Meaning digest these scriptures, learn the scriptures. And there's a way you learn the scripture. You have to come up, you have to come up under people. You know, that's in uh, Romans, uh, the 10th chapter. How beautiful are the feet of them that bring good tidings. And how can they hear without a teacher or a preacher? Uh, Galatians 4, you come up under governors and tutors. So you just can't pop up one day and all of a sudden you know that you, you see the 12 tribe sign and all of a sudden you know that you know everything about the scriptures and you go out and teach. No, you're going to teach some madness. You're going to teach that the earth is flat. 
You're going to teach that uh, Edomites can make it. You're going to teach the Gentiles can make it. You're going to teach, uh, you might teach the, uh, uh, the Babylon, the greatest is Vatican City, or the, uh, there's no such thing as missiles in the scriptures. And these are, this is, this is from, uh, guys that used to be down with us that set up their own thing. But the, the main thing that gets Jake messed up is money. You know, the Apostle Paul spoke about being content. You, whatever you have, you have a, a, a roof over your head. You can, you know, eat. You can eat when you, let's say you eat two times a day. You know, you, 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 every day you'll be able to eat your two meals or your three meals a day. You have a roof over your head. You have clothes on your back. You know, you might have a, uh, a mode of transportation. You may have a job. Oh, and by the way, the new rule is every everybody in Great Millstone, every member in Great Millstone of age is supposed to be gainfully employed. You're supposed to have jobs. You know, it's not about you go out on the weekend with the camp and the rest of the week. You know, I always say this, you you what you playing video games, eating eating big industrial sized bowls of uh honeycombs or sugar smacks and being a nigga the rest of the week because none of because none of you including myself none of us is making videos seven hour long videos none of us is making you know monday you get up you know you do what you got to do then you set up the camera and you do a five hour long video and then you might come back later that night and do a two hour long video. Ain't none of you doing that. Ain't none of you. Like I said, including myself. So what are you doing in the meantime, in between time? Now what I do do for the most part is do a video every day. I may skip a day here and there. But I might come back two days later and do two videos or three videos, depending on how the spirit hits me. And that goes the same for uh, Apostle Gabar. He does a daily uh, edification. So he does a video every day. Uh, the same goes for uh, Apostle Orion Lop. And there's others out there that, that are always... And then brothers get... Men get examples from us. If they see us doing a video every day, they'll say they'll they'll look at it and say, "Well, that's a good thing." They ain't gonna say it's a bad thing. They ain't gonna say, "Look, nigga, you you doing too many videos." No, they're gonna say that's a good thing. I got to get in that spirit of doing a video a day. You got to constantly be pushing this word, man. And that's what it says in uh, Psalms uh, uh, 19. We call that the internet scripture or the YouTube scripture. So if anybody wants to learn this, they can go to my page. They can go to any other brother or uh, elders or apostles page. And they're going to get something. They're going to get, get a good topic, man. They're going to learn. But anyway, I'm going to, you know, coming back to the topic, when you come into this thing, you know, you learn this truth, and then you go out on the highways and the byways, and then you do the little classes, and then you get somebody follow you, and then you get the, that one person turns into five person, and then you get a pretty good sized congregation, then you got to set up and establish some type of order where you have guys from different states. Uh, they become heads and they have men up under them. And before you know it, those guys that you taught, before you know it, ten years go by, and they and they know and they know the scriptures. They know everything. In ten years, you're supposed to know everything. When I say everything, I'm talking about the scriptures. And then, you know, 
you got the thing where brothers send in donations or give you money or support you or give you tights, which all the members of GMS are supposed to be sending tights. You know, you're supposed to have a job and you're supposed to be out there on the grind. And at the same time, you got to, through the spirit of the most high, put up at least one video a day or at least three videos a week. And then, you know, you, you're taking care of yourself, your household, your children. You know, you got a lot of, you got men out there that's in Israel that don't, that's not taking, they got a family. He left his woman with their children. He, and he got a new set of, of, a new, whole new family. And he's not taking care of the first one. Like I said, you can't be a Hebrew Israelite on a, a Saturday and then be a grimy nigga the rest of the goddamn week. So you got a guy that he becomes a head or one of the heads and he has a, a, a handful of followers from around the country and even around the world, globally. And they meet certain people and they find out certain people make more money than others. Some brothers have businesses and so forth. And it's not your job to get all that money so you can live a lavish lifestyle, man. And neither is, is, is it your job to get a, a business, a money-making business. Now, now there's nothing wrong with getting a business. There's nothing. The, the Apostle Paul was a tent make, maker. And he worked with uh, Priscilla and Aquila. And he was also get, given financial help from other of the churches that he taught. Now the church of Corinth, as a matter of fact, you know what, let me let me go to that. Let me go to that real quick. Carry this over here. This is what the apostle Paul said, because the church that he had the most problems with was the church of Corinth. Yeah, them them niggas. Bear me for a minute. Okay, it says in the first verse, Am I not an apostle? This is Paul speaking. Am I not free? Have I not seen Yahweh Shai, our Lord? Are not ye are, are not ye my work in the Lord? Who is he talking to? He's talk, talking to the church of Corinth. He's saying, Are not ye my work in the Lord? In other words, the fact that you woke up to this truth is because of the Apostle Paul. Second verse, if I be not an apostle unto others, yet doubtless I am, I am to you. For the seal of my apostle, apostleship are ye in the Lord. So he brought them up to the level teaching them this truth. My answer to them that do examine me is this. Give me a second. Hey, y'all, call me, call me back. I'm in the middle of a video. Hey, y'all, hey, hey, brother, I know you got good mood, good news. Oh, okay. Right, I'll talk to you later. All right, shalom. Hey, that was Apostle Gabar. So I told him, um, well, you heard it. I said, I'm doing a video. So I'll talk to him later. Anyway, uh, it says, uh, and this is a this is a, this is a good scripture, man. I can do a class just on this, this just on this chapter alone, because it says a lot. It says in the third verse, "My answer to them that that do examine me is this." Now, what did it mean by them examining him? They would they would say, "Well, why is he doing this? Why is he doing that?" Why is he asking for money? So he explains why he's asking for money. Because he's he's taking time out to teach you. So he has to take time out to study. To give you those answers. 
It says, have not we power to eat and drink? Have, have we not power to lead about a sister or wife? So Paul is saying, look, I can have a wife, you know, as well as other apostles. Exa perfect example is Peter. He had a wife. And as the brethren of our Lord and Cephas, a brethren of our Lord, because the Lord had two, two brothers that were part of the discipleship or the apostleship. That was James and Jude. There was two, two Jameses and there was two Judes. So, so the two brothers of, of our Lord had women. They had wives. And Cephas, and Cephas is Peter. It says, a uh, sixth verse, Or I only and Barnabas uh, have not we power to for, forbear working. Now what does that mean? Forbear working. It means have we not power not to work? In other words, we shouldn't have to work and y'all should have to take care of us. That's what the Apostle Paul is saying. So, you know, in the Christian religion, you have a pastor. A pastor shouldn't have to have a, a, a secondary job. His job is supposed to be the pastor over that church. But they're not teaching the church the truth. They're not teaching the church that the Israelites, they're not teaching that, uh, they're not teaching about uh, America being Babylon the Great. They're not teaching that uh, the so called white men are the Edomites. They're not giving you the name of they, they They're just saying that they're pastors. But they're false pastors. We are the true pastors. So in us being the true pastors, the congregation is supposed to take care of us. And I'm, re and I'm reading it right now. So you got guys now in the video, uh, Kanai was mentioned. And um, his thing was about getting this business and getting that business and doing that. And if we can be like Amazon. and Well, you know, you know what he's doing? And I'm I'm guilty. I, we was all guilty of that, especially back at One West, and we all had those dreams of being, you know, Israelites making all kind of money, which that's not the right mindset. The Apostle Paul said, "Be ye content." The Apostle Paul also said, "I know how to abound, uh, abound, and to be a base." There were certain times where, where Paul came into blessings, and there was other times where the Apostle Paul was struggling. It said, uh, the seventh verse, uh, who goeth a, a warfare any time at his own charges? In other words, if you're part of an army, it's the government that's supposed to feed you, clothe you, give you the weaponry. You don't come out of your pocket. So the Apostle Paul is, is, is comparing this truth to, to a war that's being waged. So if you're warring and teaching the people to raise them up in this truth, they're supposed to take care of you. It said, Who planteth a vineyard and eateth not the fruit thereof? Or who feedeth a flock and eateth not the milk of the flock? Say I say I these things as a man, or say not the law the same also, because in the law what does it say? It speaks about the Levites receiving tithes, ten percent. And that includes money. For it is written in the law of Moses, thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the of the ox that treadeth out the corn, do if not the most I take take care of oxen. Or say if he it uh, altogether for our sakes, for our sakes, no doubt. This is written that he that ploweth. So what do we plow? Well, what does it say in Luke 9, uh, 62? He that turneth his back on the plow and looketh back is not fit for the kingdom. Are we actually, do we actually have a plow in our hand? No, the plow is doing his work when we go out on the highways and the byways, when we do doing these sit downs, all right? So that's the plow. It says, uh, "He uh, that he that ploweth should plow in hope, and that he that uh, 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 thresheth in hope should be partakers of his hope." 
If we have sown unto you spiritual things, now what are the spiritual things? We broke down the scriptures for you. We told you that what this scripture meant and that scripture meant and how to break this scripture down, how to break that scripture down. And because if none of us, I'll say us, Great Millstone, IUIC, ISUPK, uh, any of those groups that stem from uh, the one West, the only groups you would have out there are certain Israelite groups teaching that uh, the white man is Japheth. Or basically just going into the Old Testament. Or saying that the Messiah didn't come yet. So they didn't have the truth. We here that came out of one West, we have the truth. And we here at Great Mills don't have 100% truth. Truth. The rest of those camps have maybe 95% truth. So they should be watching our videos and taking notes. Eleven verse, if we have sown unto you spiritual things, now what does that mean, spiritual things? We broke the scriptures down for you. Is it not a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? What, what does it mean by carnal things? Your, your money. You're supposed to take care of the ones that, 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 that taught you, that ministered this truth to you. So now going back to Kenai and uh, uh, Nathaniel, Nathaniel Oligar, because that was his original name at One West, they shouldn't have to work if they're actually teaching the truth. But at the same time, they shouldn't try to set up businesses and make all kind of money because our riches are going to come in the kingdom. We, we, we're not placed here to be multi-millionaires and live uh, ex extravagant lifestyles, luxurious lifestyles. No, we're here to do the work, man. Most I said in James, he gave this truth to the poor. Anyway, that's all I'm going to read on that. Yeah, so anything you do outside of, uh, if the Most High set you up and you believe that you're a teacher and you out constantly out there teaching his word and you breaking down scriptures, and that's what Great Millstone is known as. You can talk all the shit that you want. What are we known, known for? We're known for going out there on the highways and the byways and going in and we'll say some words and then we're going to and back it up with a scripture. The same, the, 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 the thing that I'm doing right now, I'm, I'm saying things and I'm reading the scriptures. Backing up things with the scriptures. It says here in Math, Matthew 6. I'll start the 19 verse. It says, lay not up. For yourself treasures upon earth. Now do we have treasures on earth? Yes we do. We have uh, each camp has a certain amount of uh, a, a treasury. You know a certain amount of money put to the side. Whatever is collected from the congregation. And that's for the. Uh, as the Apostle Paul said in the 1 Corinthians 9 chapter. That's for the heads. The uh, matter of fact. You know what let me go back. I want to get a little bit more of that. Okay, give me a second. Okay, 14 verse. Yeah, I'm so so tempted to read the whole chapter, but uh, somebody else could do it. Maybe maybe um, Apostle Ryan Live. He, maybe he can do it. You know he. You know th that this would be a good. I'm not telling. I'm not ordering him to do it. You know maybe the Apostle Gabar could do it. Maybe I'll do it later. But this is a a very a very good scripture dealing with this particular subject I'm I'm, I'm into right now. It says uh, the 14th verse. It says, even so hath 
the Lord ordained that they which preach or teach, and that's us, the gospel, should live of the gospel. Excuse me, I had to turn off the, uh, the uh, camera for a, a bit. I had to do something, and plus I had to plug this thing in. Anyway, uh, it says, uh, the 14th verse again, 1 Corinthians 9, verse 14. Even so, he, even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live with the gospel. And as you read down, basically he cursed out the, the Israelites of Corinth because they had a problem with uh, helping them out. And he said, I'm going to, he said, I'm going to, in not too many words, he said, I'm going to help you niggas out any damn way. Okay? Because he said in the 16th verse, no, he said in the 15th verse, I'll start the 15th verse, but I have used none of these things, neither have I written these things that it should be so done unto me, for it for it were better for me to die than that any man should make my glory void. For though I so he kept he kept dealing with them, even though they were a bunch of damn knuckleheads. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, because your glory is going to come in the kingdom. You're, you're going to get the crown in the kingdom. For necessity is laid upon me. Yeah, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. Okay, so now let's go back to Matthew 6 verse 19. So the order is this. If you're a, if you're a teacher of this word, this truth, and you teach people, they come into this thing. Uh, because I'm gonna say this uh, before I go further. All the men up under us that came into this thing 11 years ago, go, going on 12 years ago, you are our, f our fruit. You are our fruit. The, the Apostle Paul saw, said, going back and going back to uh. 1 Corinthians 9 again. It says, uh, let me find the exact verse. Right, the first verse. It says, uh, Are not ye my work in the Lord? So all these different great millstone groups around the country and around the world, you came in, you came, you follow great millstone because you saw the teachers. You saw your teachers. Uh, the the uh, elder uh, Malcolm, yeah, he does a lot of inspira inspirational videos, you know, and I watch all his videos. Because they're quick to the point, you know, he might do a little half an hour video, but he gets right into it. You know, you don't got to do a 27 hour video, you know. You could do a half hour video, maybe an hour video. And keep in mind that Jake has a short attention span, so you can't give him too much at one time. Because it'll make, make their head explode. Anyway, um, he would be, he, he, he made his video, one of the last videos he made. Uh, early in, in the week, he, I think he, I think the video, I'm not going to go to the, I'm not going to read the exact, uh, the, the exact title, but he said something to the effect, uh, 2007, the day we saw our teachers. And he was talking about us because he came up under us. He came up under myself, under Apostle Gabar, under, under Apostle Rakar, under Apostle uh, uh, Ariam Lab. And then the elders, the, the, the next level of, of elders, originally from Connecticut, they were teaching as well. So all these guys that you see on making these GMS videos, they, they got it from watching us and taking notes 
and now they and now they know what we know. We uh, they know what we know because we didn't hold nothing back. We gave them everything so they can turn around and teach others. So they would be they, they would be our work in the Lord. Like Paul, the Apostle Paul said, "Are not ye my work in the Lord?" And they're doing exactly what we've been doing and we're still doing is making videos, doing sit downs, going out in the highways and the byways. Like I said before, Great Millstone is known for what? If you go to Great Millstone video, you ain't going to see a, uh, uh, You ain't going to see a music video. You ain't going to see us trying to sell you mugs and cups and T-shirts and raffle tickets and shit like that. Now, let's say you got a brother in Great Millstone that has a business. He has a skill. He can make money. Somebody said, you should turn this into a business. Well, but don't make that business to have anything to do with this truth. Let's say you went to uh, selling car parts. You know, you used to work at a, a car part company. Then you got the address to the wholesalers where you get the car parts. And you make a little website and you sell car parts. Well, there ain't nothing wrong with that. You can do that. That's your thing. That has nothing to do with us. You go ahead and you set up your car part business. Or maybe you might have a, 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 a three tow trucks and you build it up to six tow trucks. Then you build it up to ten tow, tow trucks. And you're going out towing or whatever. Or whatever the case may be. The only thing you're supposed to do is whatever you get from that money, that's your money, that's your business. Is you supposed to give tights and an offering, and you may help certain brothers here and there, but a brother can't come up to you and say, "Well, look, brother, you gonna have to, you know, you gonna have to give me five G's." You can't, you can't be doing no shit like that. If a brother chooses to help you, that's between you and that brother. And a lot of times. Certain brothers, we go out and get something to eat, you know, with, in the middle of doing something. And I and I mostly always pick up the tab, you know. And if I ain't got the money, I pull out a credit card or whatever. And I, I can choose not to do that. So if, you, if you're a teacher of this truth, that's your main focus is teaching, man. Not, because, not trying to become rich. That's that, that the carnal mind in all of us. Our glory is going to come in the kingdom. And we all had those get rich quick quick schemes back at One West. Everybody in the school had a, had a, had a hustle or two. I met myself, uh, uh, Johanna, General Johanna, as they call him, General Johanna, he he was like the hustling king. He, he used to come, hey man, this guy used to come out with some hustles. <laughs> and then he'd come and show me another brother, yeah, now if you do this, you're going to get paid, man. Plus there was a dude in the school, and this was in like, this had to be like 80, 88 maybe, 89. And he was, you know, he was cool with all of us. But he really wasn't in the truth. He wasn't really in, breaking in the scriptures. But he used to kind of come around us. And he came to school every once in a while. He'd be at the speaking. But he was into like making them them leather jackets. You know, the, the Jake wear. You know, and he had he actually had a hamite. Now these hamites that come to this country, a lot of them, they'll go to France. And they'll become master sewers. And they can sew anything, man. And they're working, they're pumping gas. Because Johanna, uh, General Johanna, told me that. And I went up to this hand my pump of gas and I said, Can you sew? He said, Yes. So I said, How good of a sew? He said, I'm a master sewer. I said, Where'd you learn it? From France. So this guy had a couple of hand mites, which we believe were Jake's. And they would, you would always get like a, like some basement apartment and you would make these leather jackets, man, and sell them. And then this brother, this here this here this was like 88. This dude made a million dollars. 
And when he made that million dollars, he kind of stopped. He said, let me, let, me, let me take a break. You know what he did? He, he spent that money. He, he went crazy spending that damn money. But through that little side business that he had, he, he, he hit a million dollars. And so now that he, he knew how to make a million dollars, he can make another million dollars. Or he can make two million dollars. And I remember that, man. And it was, and it was uh, Johanna that told me that. He said, yo, you know this brother cleared a million dollars? And a million dollars back in, in, eight, in eight, 1988 was a lot of money. So you had guys that made money, and then you had other brothers that had higher ranks try to get the money from them. Look, that's none of your damn business, man. And your business is this. If you're a teacher, is to teach. That's your job, man, is to teach. You're a, you're a te teacher and a, a teacher slash entrepreneur slash multi-millionaire slash I own three car dealerships and a tow truck company. And that's, 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 that's that carnal mind thinking. And like I said, there's nothing wrong if a brother got a business thing going and he want to get into business, that's on him, brother. But if you're a teacher, we ain't supposed to be setting up no businesses, man. It says uh, 19 verse, Matthew 6, verse 19. It says, lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth. Now, we do have a certain amount of treasures on earth. We Each camp has some type of money laid to the side. Maybe it's in the bank account. Maybe they appointed a brother uh, to hold his money, whatever money is collected or whatever. If somebody send donations. All of them, if they don't, they should have some type of uh, situation for, for the help of the, uh, the teachers. And then it goes down the line. You know, there's brothers that come up and they come into jams. You know, you're supposed to help that brother. There's one brother, he was in a jam in a situation and we helped him and he needed a a, a significant amount of money a, a pretty big amount of money and um, we got together we did what we had to do and uh, got with some of the camps and helped the brother but they still got him going through hell even though he gave up the money and the scripture said money answers all things but you got to do it you know, you, you, you got to do it uh, spiritually. You got to deal with money uh, on a spiritual level. You know, you always wanted to buy a, a $500 pair of shoes. Nigga, you ain't supposed to be buying no $500 pair of shoes. Or you wanted three gold rings and, uh, you know, you always wanted a, you always wanted a my back. Why in the hell are you driving around with a damn my back, man? Anyway, it says, uh, lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth where moth and, and rust doeth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. And how do you lay up for yourself treasures in he heaven? By doing this work. Where neither moth nor rust doeth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For 21st verse, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So if, if your treasure is in heavenly things, you're doing the work of the Most High, you're doing videos every day, you're on the highways and the byways every week, you know, you're constantly pushing, you're known for pushing out this word, and breaking down scriptures for the people that don't know. Well, you get, you're investing in heaven, man. You do that. You know, you sacrifice, your, you sacrifice to do this work. You sacrifice your time to do this work. When you in the, when the kingdom of heaven is established, you're going to get one of them high thrones. It said, for, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And some brothers came into this thing diligent, doing the work, and then somehow money came in. 
And they never had this type of money before. They never experienced experience in having all this money. So they go crazy with the money. And then they want more money. Remember the fool that, that built up his bonds and he tore the bar, bonds down and big, built bigger bonds? Uh, 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 bonds? And what happened? The Lord said, thou fool, don't, don't you know that tonight you're going to die? You build up all this treasure for somebody else to uh, uh, live off of it, man. I know this one brother that passed and, uh, you know, he's working his ass off to build a nice house and put money in the bank. And he died and people that around him and his family is living off his money. And they they are they 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 don't do shit. They just living off his money that he worked that he labored for. But I know how the mind the carnal mind works. You you got to fight that. You got to fight that carnal mind, man. You got to get spiritual. Yeah, when I'm out there on it the, on, on a slave, man. You know, I'd be thinking what when I go when I get to the crib, what what am I gonna teach on? And sometimes I'll have a subject to teach on, and sometimes I gotta meditate for a subject to come to me. Because doing these videos day after day, that's the discipline. There's certain days you might not know what to speak on. Nothing comes to your mind. But then you gotta you gotta have the discipline to meditate and come up and you, you go through the the web the web page and look up certain articles brother might have sent you an article and then you say i'm going to do a, a video on that that's the discipline it says for for where your treasure is there will your heart be also so if you're all in to making money and open up businesses and getting a brother that got a lot of money so you can get some of his money then that's where your heart is man your heart is into money into mammon it says, uh, there will your heart be also. It says, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Perfect example, Floyd Mayweather. He has a saying that the Mexican trainer that died recently, the older Mexican trainer that Floyd called his Mexican grandfather, he was the one that came up with the the uh, the, 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 the term um Hard work, dedication. So they'll be in the gym saying, hard work, dedication. So they dedicate their self. With all the skills that Floyd has, you notice he trained his ass off too. Because skills alone is not, is not going to get you through. You're going to you're gonna have to have a, um, you know, a work ethic. Working in the gym, focusing. So that's how you got to be with, with this truth. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be dark, how great is that darkness? If you if you ain't a hundred percent in this spirit and the truth, like like it says, uh, Luke, uh, be ye on fire. But it, but because you are lukewarm, I, I will spew you out of thy mouth in uh, Revelation the third chapter. The most high. Only once men that's on fire. So if you're less than on fire, you know, the, the question is, how much are you lukewarm in, in comparison to being on fire? And this thing, you can't give 80%. You can't give 75%. You got to give 100%. Go hard or go home. It says, no man, and a lot of these, um, this verse right here, a lot of these, a lot of you are, are, are in this uh, verse right here. It says, no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate, and you got guys that don't go out in the street because they think their boss going to see him. And my thing is, fuck, fuck the boss. If he see me, I'll curse his ass out too. And then he can go ahead and fire me and I'll get another goddamn job or open up a business. Yeah, a lot of a lot of brothers I've met through the years that didn't want to go out because uh, they figured their boss is going to see them. Hell, your boss might see see you and not say nothing, give you a raise because he because he fears you. It 
Hell, we worked at a job, me, the bar, all of us, where we used to call ourselves, we used to salute each other in front of the board, and they were two, two so-called Jews. We used to give full salutes in front of the bosses. We used to call ourselves by, by our Hebrew names. And then we even had, you had to have a road name. So my road name was Tahar. Gabar's name, road name was uh, Gabar. And they knew about us, but we didn't give a shit. And they didn't care because they said, as long as these guys doing good work, we don't care. Uh, it says, uh, oh, I remember uh, this the lawyer I had years ago, I told him I was an Israelite. He was a so-called Jew, but he was cool. And um, we, we would go to court. And when we when we closed the court, I give him this. I showed him how to do the salute. We used to salute salute each other in the middle of the street. And I remember one day, the next day I saw the next week I saw him. The next month I saw him. He wanted to show off that he had a watch with the Hebrew characters on it. He kind of he said, "Check this out," you know. And I said, "Oh man!" I said, "Can I can I have that watch?" He said, "Nope." He said, "My girl, my 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 fiance got it for me. I can't give it away." So. Hey, brother, if you go on the spirit and you about truth, brother, your, your so-called boss to see you, he might turn around and give you a raise, man. How about that? And if not, and if he fires you, you go get another job or you set up a little small business. It says no man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other. There's a thing, there's two, there's two primary ways you can make money in a business. You can have a, a business where you, you got to bust your ass to maintain that business, or you can have a business where you receive uh, passive income. Like, for example, there's this uh, app-based business called uh, Toro, where if you got a night, two cars, three cars, you can put one of those cars or two of those cars on the market and people will will rent the car like a car rental, but they're renting, renting from an actual person. But but that's in the market, and they might drive that car for a week. And let's say you charge them for that car, depending on how nice the car is. Let's say you charge them a hundred dollars a day. They use it for seven days. You didn't made you seven hundred dollars, and you ain't do nothing. That's called passive passive income. When you buy something, all right, these are principles of business. When you go to a car dealership, you can go to a car dealership and brand, buy you a brand new car, right? And you can show it off and you can be one of them jakes that, wa that wash their car, shampoo their car every, every other day for two hours. Or you can put a limousine license on it and make money. What's the difference between those two, ca those two cars, a regular car that you use for personal use, and a, and a car that you use as a limousine, the limousine is would be considered a capital good because you're making money off of it. The car that you use personally is called, um, you got a capital good and a consumer good. So if you're going to buy something, buy something that's going to make you money. Let's say you see a popcorn machine at a wholesaler and you sell popcorn. Man, I ran into a, a guy that got a popcorn truck on 34th Street. He got an actual truck. Uh, he just sells popcorn. And you know the profit mar margin on popcorn? To make a big, like in a movie theater, you got that big bucket of popcorn. You know how much it costs to produce that big bucket? About five cents. Because a little handful of kernels, they expand. So that's nothing but profit. I mean, you brothers got to learn the principles of business too. Because hey, back during the One West days, all of us had a hustle. All of us had a hustle. We had a regular job and we had a hustle. Sometimes you had a hustle on a job. You know, you might be working at a particular job, a retailer, and you might be selling um, oils and incense to the jakes that work on that job, but they go and you making two, you making two, you making your check at the end, you getting your check at the end of the week, and then you making a little side money. It said, "No, no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other." 
So if you all into making money, you know, you got people that make money and they, they, it don't bother them. They don't, get, they don't get messed up with the business. They just make it to, to help their family, pay bills and whatever. But then they have their true passion. You got a lot of multi-millionaires that like to uh, go mountain climbing and selling the seas. And, uh, but then they have businesses, but they're not worried about their business. They put managers that they can trust so they can, so they can do what they love to do. It says, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now, when you look up the word mammon, That's why the most I put the spirit on these devils to put together the blue the, the blue letter. The word there is uh ma monas. And it means treasure, riches, where it is per personified and opposed to God. Then it gives you uh, some scriptures. Oh, there's this one good scripture, Luke uh, 16, verse 9. And I say unto you, make to yourself friends of the mammon of unrighteousness. You know what that means? You might have uh, people that you know that's in the world. It might be Jake's. And you might have a, a, like a little business thing going with them. And you do, uh, hey, it says be friends with them, meaning deal with them for the business sake. That when ye fell, they may receive you into everlasting habitation, meaning they, they'll help you out. You got to have people in connections. They call it connections. Yeah, I got a lot of connections. Yeah, brother, brother needs a good mechanic that's not going to rip him off. I got connections. When you go to my man, he ain't going to rip you off. You tell him I sent you. Well, I need a car. Well, I got another guy. You talk to this guy, he'll give you a car. He won't rip you off. You know, just mention my name. Got to have, you got to, you got to have connections, man. And boy, I have connections on how to get your, your, your car painted, body work on the car, the, the, the best transmission guy to go to, the best engine guy. The guy, a guy that that's mas masters, he's a master in uh, uh, electrical, because you just can't go to any mechanic. So I can give you, hey, if you ask the Apostle Gabar, Apostle Ron, Blah, Apostle Carl, any of them, they'll tell you here to hard. He got he got all those connections, man. He he can get, he give this guy a call saying I'm sending my man down to take care of him. You know you got to get connections in life, in life. So that's. That's making friends with the mammon of unrighteousness, meaning guys that's not in the truth, that you're not going to really tell them that they in, that, that they Israelites because they're going to not want to deal with you. Uh, Luke uh, 16, verse 11. If therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, how will, how we, who will commit to your trust the true rich, riches. So here the Most High set you up to do certain things. Throw money in your face and see what you're going to do with it. If you go, if you fall off this truth, you know, guys, I, I'm, I know one, one brother years ago that hit the lotto. And when he hit that lotto, man, him and his wife, they got a, a brand new house. They got this. They went on trips. Then, then they spent the money and they went into heavy debt. So this guy had to work with two or three jobs. So therefore, he couldn't go out and teach no more. And then many years, many moons later, he tried to come back in the truth and try to just get back in the position. And um, it never worked. Eventually, he just fell off.
You know, when you read these scriptures, man, you you know, these are principles. A man that's 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 been on this earth for 50, 60, 70 years and might have been a merchant marine, might have been in the military, might have fought in world Vietnam, you know, might have did this, might have did that. He might be a mechanic and uh, you know, he, he might have all these skills. Well, that's the man that you talk to. It says, uh, 25th verse, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. So you're trying to get this mega business and you're trying to make this money so you can live that lifestyle. That's not your job. If the Most High set you up to be a teacher, your main focus is to teach. And, and I dare any, any one of you to tell me that I took off or I turned my back or I took a break. I've been, I've been on fire since day one. And so what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink. No, like, for example, any of the brotherhood in Great Mill, so I'm talking about New York, let's say a brother ain't got nothing to eat. He can, he can get on the phone and call a brother and say, look, man, what, what you cooking tonight? Yeah, my, you know, I'm, I ain't got nothing to eat, brother. My wife, me, me and her got in an argument. He, brother said, come on over to the crib. I'll hook you up something. You know, what we got in New York is, is, is a strong brotherhood, man. Them brothers, you know, we don't got to watch over them young brothers. Them young brothers that been in this thing for going on 12 years, they get together. They do their videos, man. You know, if a brother is uptight, they'll come out their pocket, you know. It says, nor yet for your, and, and, and you can ask any brother that came from out of town, came to New York, that we didn't treat treat them right, man. And I always say this, and you tell me if I'm lying. Are you brothers all right? You, you brothers need a little money? They might say, no, nah, we, we come here to give you money. And sometimes they might not say something, but the other brother said, no, nah, he's uptight, he just don't want to say it. So we bring him to the side, look, brother, here, D is this going to help you? Oh, yeah, this, that'll help me, Duana. You know, there's, bro there's brotherhood, man. It says, nor yet for your own body what ye shall put on. Is not, the, is, is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the flowers of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into bonds. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? But that's all I'm going to read on that. And I'm going to read this one last scripture. This is... Uh, Okay, this is first first Timothy six verse three. It says, If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words. Now if you say the mark of the beast is uh embargo of Christianity, that that's not wholesome words. That's not of a sound doctrine. It said, even the words of our Lord Yahweh Shai, and to the doctrine, and there's only one drop doctrine. It didn't you notice it didn't say doc and to the doctrines, it says to the doctrine, there's only one doctrine which is according to powerliness, he is proud, so a lot of these guys are proud, knowing nothing, but doubting about questions. Now when you look up this word doubting or dotting, the word from the Greek is gnosis, where you get the word nauseating. And in, and in uh, there's a term, uh, you can look it up as well, is, it's uh, ad nauseum. In other words, you 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 bring up questions to the point of ad nauseum till people get sick of hearing it. So when you get guys that come up, you know, brothers teaching all right, then all of a sudden he'll say, pop up and say, uh, you know, uh, 
the 12 tribes is going off. And then your attitude is, oh boy, here we go again. Like the recent example, uh, uh, Adam, uh, Adam Abbott, you know, he, he, now he never said this in two years about the mark of the beast uh, being spiritual or being something that we, other than what we taught. So now he's bringing up this new thing. So we're looking at, like, looking at it like it's, oh, here, here come another one of these guys changing up the doctrine. So that's what that means. He is proud knowing nothing but doubting about questions and strife of words. So when you come against, you say, well, the apostles got it wrong. Well, you're bringing strife. Where, wherefore cometh envy, uh, strife, railings, evil surmisings. Let me look up the word sur surmisings. Strong's G, 5283. Upanoia. Upanoia. Okay, it really doesn't say nothing. It says surmisings. Okay, which means to su suppose, to surmise. You know? Doesn't really go too deep. In other words, they come with their own uh, conclusions. It says, it goes on to say in the fifth verse, uh, 1 Timothy 6 verse 5, perverse the disputing of men of corrupt mind. So really you're a corrupt mind. When you say, well, I looked at the scripture and you know what? Babylon the Great is not America, it's uh, Vatican City. That's a man of a corrupt mind. Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. Now that goes into you guys that, um, like I said, the video that, that uh, Apostle Gabar put up dealing with uh, Bezalel leaving um, the IUIC, it was pretty much over, over money. And like I said, I didn't read, check out the whole video. I don't got all the facts. But I do remember back at One West, a lot of shit happened over goddamn money. A supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. Get away from that type of guy. But godliness or powerliness with contentment is great gain. There's another script that I had. I think I took it down. Bear me for a minute. I just want to try this. Give me a second here. Well, it's in the same scripture. It's in the same scripture. Actually, it's in the 8th verse. So we're going to read down. It's actually in the 8th verse. It says, 6th uh, verse. But, but powerliness or godliness with contentment is great gain. For we ought not, we, bought, we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be con there, f there with content. You got a roof over your head. You be able to eat. You might have a little cable. You know, you got everything to live. Uh, you know, live. You got, you got, you got something to, that that's going to sustain you.
You know, you might have a a Ford, whatever, and it's a good car. It's not brand new, but it's it might be a an eight year old car, but it's a good car. It, it rarely ever breaks down. You don't you don't have too much trouble in. All you got to do is put gas in it, and uh, you know maybe tune it up once every two years and make sure you change the oil. And the car is good. It takes you where you got to go. But you, you but what do you want? You want a brand new car, but you don't want any old brand new car. You want something that's you know you you want you want to look good in that particular uh, you know conveyance. Which you don't need that, and that's when that, and that's when you lose that faith, because you're all about this world. The scripture said, "Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world." For if if thou loveth the world, the love of the Father is not is not in you. It says, "A first and having food and remnant, let us uh, be there with content." Now you're gonna have men out there that have more than more than the uh, food and remnant. And that brother might be able to help you. But you don't try to be like that guy. Well, I want to, I want what he got. Because I'm over him. I should have more than he has. That, that, then you're coveting what this man has. A ninth verse. But they that be that be but they that will be rich fall into temptation and the snare. And into many foolish and hurtful lust, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil. It didn't say for for money is the root of all evil. It says for the love of money is the root of all evil. When when um Job lost everything, what did he keep? He kept his integrity. He found out that his wife, his woman, didn't have no integrity. He said, you act like one of them foolish women. Well, guess what? I got news for you, Job. She was one of those foolish women, but she was just playing a role. It said, for the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith. So they don't go out like they supposed to go out. And if they do go out, you see they ain't speaking from the heart. And pass themselves through with many sorrows. 11 verse. But thou, O man of the Most High, flee these things and follow after righteousness, goodness, uh, uh, godliness, powerliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called. And the scriptures say, Many are called, but few are chosen. And have professed a good profession before many witnesses. Anyway, with that, I'm gonna close. I think I, I think I said enough. But this thing, you know, you you got a particular position, and people look up to you as a great teacher. And um, you know, you see that these people have money, and you're trying to either get their money or you're trying to have money like them. No, you ain't supposed to be like that, brother. Just because you have a, a high position as a teacher in Israel doesn't mean you're going to be the richest guy in the room. Jehovah Shai was over Joseph of Arimathea, but Joseph of Arimathea was a rich man. And he was the one that that uh, gave up his tomb for, for Jehovah Shai's burial, man. And that's why guys be falling off, man. They get whirly. Anyway, with that, I'm going to say Shalom.